in the previous lecture we have discussed about the stabilized reactance modulator which is incorporated with automatic frequency control loop and we have studied with the example the working of stabilized reactance modulator now in this lecture we will be able to study one uh, circuit diagram related to direct phase modulation direct phase modulation means the phase of the signal is directly phase of the carrier signal is directly proportional to the instantaneous values of modulating signal and we all know that when the phase of the signal is changing indirectly the frequency will also change and that is why the direct pm modulator is also called as indirect fm modulator now this is the circuit diagram of direct phase modulator using transistor and this particular circuit is nothing but our simple class a power amplifier with two input one is the modulating signal another is the carrier signal because we all know for any type of modulating circuit modulator circuit we require two input one is the carrier another is modulating signal so let us locate that where is the carrier and where is modulating signal so you can see here there is a unmodulated carrier present here with a frequency of fc and that is connected to capacitor c1 and it is connected to point x the point x has a significance here and that is why it is marked the modulating signal is applied at the base of the transistor through capacitor c2 there is a voltage divider biasing of r1 and r2 applied to this particular transistor rc and re is having the resistance that is the collector and emitter resistor and the pm that is phase modulated output will be available at point x and that will be our direct phase modulation output so somewhere in our working we should be able to prove that phase of this particular circuit is changing directly with the modulating signal and that is why it is called as direct phase modulation circuit now why this particular point x is marked suppose you consider that this particular circuit is our simple class a power amplifier and whenever this particular transistor is going to conduct what will happen when the transistor is conducting it will act as a short circuit and uh, though we are saying that at the short circuit there will be resistance will be zero but then there will be some resistance some internal resistance which will be present and that we are naming it as rt the emitter resistance will be there rc will be there so when the transistor is operating and transistor is conducting the transistor will act as a short and this particular point x is connected to ground transistor will have some internal resistance called as rt and emitter resistor is re some of this resistance is rt plus re the modulating signal is applied to the base of the transistor so when we see the working of this particular circuit let us consider that modulating signal is not applied the carrier signal is applied here now carrier signal suppose transistor is operating there is a capacitor c1 when transistor is operating this particular path will be shorted and the resistance from point x to point ground will be rt plus re when the transistor conducts resistance for resistance from point x to ground is rt plus re so this rt plus re and this c1 is designed in such a way that the phase shift which is operate which is, which we are getting from this network is 45 degree we know that r1 r and c network will be able to produce a phase shift of less than 60 degree so this c1 and this particular x to ground we are considering the transistor is conducting and c1 to rt and re these values are selected such that we get phase shift of 45 degree so when modulating signal is not applied the carrier is given a phase shift of 45 degree and it will be available at the output now what will happen when the modulating signal is applied when modulating signal is applied 
the transistor will be conducting according to this modulating signal because this transistor, this modulating signal is going to change base to emitter voltage that is VBE. According to that, the IC will change because transistor is a current control device. So when VBE changes, the IC, IB changes because of that IC will change and because of that, the current flowing through this branch is going to change. And because of that, when the current is changing, the resistance RT and RE is going to change. That is, RT plus RE is going to change. And this RT plus RE is, is according to the conduction of transistor. Transistor is going to conduct as per the modulating signal. So what will happen when the earlier, when no modulating signal was there, this C1 and RT plus RE was producing phase shift of 45 degree. Now, when the modulating signal is applied, the phase shift will change because the transistor is conducting and current is changing because of that resistance will change and because of that phase will be changing. So, whose phase is going to change? The phase of the carrier signal is changed. In accordance with what? In accordance with the modulating signal. And this is what is our definition of phase modulation that the phase of the carrier signal is going to change in accordance with modulating signal. So when no modulating signal was there, the carrier was at 45 degree phase shift. Now when the modulating signal is applied, this RT and RE is changing because of that phase shift will also change. And this phase shift is proportional to modulating signal. And therefore at the output at point X, you will be getting the direct phase modulated output and the phase of the output will be in proportion with the modulating signal. And this particular working I have summarized using this flow chart. Again, under the operating condition when the transistor acts like a resistor from point X to ground, the capacitor C1 and RT plus RE that is this particular branch is designed in such a way that it will produce a phase shift of 45 degrees. So when no modulating signal is applied, carrier undergoes a phase shift of 45 degree. But when the modulating signal is applied, this modulating signal is going to add or subtract to DC bias that is this particular VCC. And because of that, the collector current changes because of that RE changes and when RE is going to change, RT plus RE will also change. And because of this phase shift, which was 45 degree earlier, that is also going to change. And this change in the phase shift is proportional to current. Current is proportional to modulating signal voltage and hence the phase modulation is achieved. So here the phase of the carrier signal is directly changing with the modulating signal and because of that this is called as direct phase modulation. So initially we are getting one RC network is producing a phase shift of 45 degree which is later on change when the modulating signal is applied and hence the direct phase modulation is obtained. Now one more point which I want to highlight here is the relationship between FM and PM which I would like to explain with the help of this waveform. Now in this waveform you can see this waveform A is nothing but our carrier signal. The waveform B is nothing but our modulating signal and this modulating signal is having a divided into some angles with the help of this dotted line. So you can see when modulating signal is not present, the graph C is the FM output and graph D is the PM output that is phase modulated output. So when no modulating signal is there, FM may we are getting the uh, carrier frequency, PM may also we are getting carrier frequency and once again this frequency is called as rest frequency because no modulating signal is applied. Now. How, the, how this particular frequency modulated waves are drawn, you can see in the starting for the FM output, maximum deviation will be there when it is reaching the peak. When the modulating signal is increasing, that time maximum deviation will be there. So you can see frequency starting from the low frequency at higher amplitude, there is a deviation. See this particular graph is not drawn with reference to 
higher amplitude means higher frequency it is not drawn with respect to that it is drawn from the starting so here the frequency some frequency is there but when the amplitude reaches maximum there should be maximum deviation so you can see frequency is changing and when the amplitude is reaching minimum that time there is a maximum deviation you can see the frequency is changing so this particular graph of fm is not with reference to higher modulating voltage means higher frequency you can draw in that way also higher modulating voltage means higher frequency lower modulating voltage means lower frequency but this particular graph is drawn with reference to unmodulated carrier because this graph is in continuation with the unmodulated carrier so you need to see that in the fm maximum deviation occurs when there is a maximum voltage or minimum voltage so at this point there is a maximum deviation at this point there is a maximum deviation at this point there is a maximum deviation maximum deviation means if frequency is low it will become high if frequency is high it will become low and this is what we call it as deviation so this is how this particular fm wave is drawn do not get confused with the fm wave with maximum amplitude maximum frequency minimum amplitude minimum frequency here in this diagram it is shown that when the maximum amplitude is there maximum deviation will take place deviation means if frequency is high it will become low if frequency is low it will become high with reference to that fm graph is drawn now how the pm graph is drawn when the phase is going to change the phase is going to change whenever there is a zero crossing so you can see during positive half cycle the phase will be different during negative half cycle the phase will be different so at zero crossing you should have a maximum deviation in case of phase modulation so you can see phase modulated wave starts with high frequency later on it continues to increase the frequency but what happens at zero crossing there should be a maximum deviation you can see it is written maximum deviation means here there will be a maximum deviation of the phase again at this particular zero crossing you can see there is a maximum deviation here at zero crossing again there is a maximum deviation at this zero crossing again there is a maximum deviation so what is the important point to remember here in the frequency modulation the maximum frequency deviation will be at the peak which peak positive peak or negative peak and in case of phase modulation the maximum uh, maximum uh, deviation will be during zero crossing because zero crossing may the phase is going to change from positive to negative negative to positive and that is why you see at each projection if there is a maximum slope here corresponding to maximum deviation at this zero crossing again there is a maximum deviation otherwise you get a rest frequency at other place wherever there is a zero crossing that time you are getting a proper deviation and with reference to fm when there is a peak that time you are getting the maximum deviation so again do not get confused with the graph of fm this is not drawn like maximum amplitude maximum frequency minimum amplitude minimum frequency but it is drawn considering unmodulated carrier means this graph is drawn with reference to when maximum amplitude is there maximum deviation in the frequency will be there and when minimum amplitude is there that time also minimum frequency deviation will be there so frequency deviation means if high frequency it will turn to low and if it is low frequency it will turn to high this is what is the meaning and for the phase modulation the deviations will take place at zero crossing now these are some of the equations for the fm and pm so for the phase modulation modulating signal is represented by vm of t the output expression is this vc cos of omega ct into kp into vm of t frequency modulation integration of vm for the phase modulation if your vm is this equation then output will be this for frequency modulation if your vm is this equation output will be integration of cos omega m which is nothing but sin omega m divided by omega m so these are the equations for fm and pm